How's life? I want to tell you a story about the Galaxy Book 4 Edge from Samsung. And spoiler alert, this is a beautiful laptop. At about $1,800 or close to 2,000 euros, here in the Netherlands is definitely a premium device. And you know what? It plays with this other premium device I have as well, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. So that's one of the draws for people who own Samsung devices, phones, watches, buds. The S24 Ultra and the Galaxy Book play very nicely together. Not just using the Windows Link app that you can use on any Windows PC, but also continuity features. This includes the AirDrop-like quick share and clipboard sharing. If you copy on your laptop, you can paste on your phone and vice versa. Using multi-control, I could basically connect my phone as a third screen in addition to the laptop screen and the monitor. This let me interact with my phone using my mouse and also input text using the keyboard on my laptop. A nice feature I might use in the future to record B-roll of the Samsung phone because whenever I use my finger, the autofocus on my camera gets confused and just loses sight of the screen completely, which if you are a content creator, you wanna save every second you can on stuff like this. You also get the sidecar-like second screen feature if you have a tablet, you get a connection to your Galaxy Buds and of course that vintage feature, phone calls, which you can now take on your laptop instead of having to pull your phone out. Frankly, if you wanna get this laptop and use Windows and are in the Samsung ecosystem, it's a very, very sweet device for that. That ecosystem lock-in is real, unfortunately. But a laptop is just more than having compatibility with your devices. It's also the laptop itself and this is a beautiful screen. It's an AMOLED panel which pretty high resolution. It's got a 120 hertz refresh rate. And you know what, in my day-to-day -day use of video editing and just generally consuming content on this gorgeous screen, I had no complaints. It can get bright as hell. Heck, this is Samsung we're talking about, so they know how to make screens. I mean, just ask Apple, they source some of the screens from Samsung as well. Other than that, you also get touch control on the screen, which I was, I've been using a Mac for a long time and switching to touch is quite an adjustment, I must say. And it also feels a bit freeing. So you can basically touch elements on your laptop while you're typing. And of course, Mac is never gonna let you do that. They want you to buy the iPad for that. The downside, of course, is that the screen gets a bit smudgy and you know your oils from your body will kind of rub onto the screen. So you have to keep it clean. But, uh, but I'd rather have the feature and not use it rather than not have it and then say it's not there for some reason. Another beautiful thing about this laptop is it is so thin and light for a powerful laptop and coming with Snapdragon's new X Elite processor. Uh, this is a very, very good form factor if you're walking around and carrying around. It's only 3.4 pounds or 1.5 kilos and it has a beautiful wedge shape, you know, like how MacBooks used to be. Uh, you'll have a hard time finding anything near as portable with a 16 inch screen. Now compare this to my MacBook, the M1 Max MacBook admittedly, and look at the difference between the thickness. It's just, it's not even comparable. The MacBook is closer to a desktop situation, whereas this is great for on the go. And on the go, you'll also have a lot of ports. You have a USB-A port, which the MacBooks don't give you and a micro SD card port. You get a full-sized HDMI, but a micro SD, and it's a choice I think Samsung had to make to maintain the slim profile. A bit of a downer for me because I do use full-sized SD cards, but on the other hand, I can just plug in my camera directly using USB, and that works. Now, another thing that is full-size is this keyboard. Oh my God, it's got so many keys, and it's got a full-sized number pad. A boon for people like me who use numbers quite often. And you know, there is no compromise on the keyboard itself either. It's very good to type on. I got used to it quite quickly considering I've been using the Mac for more than two or three years. Very, very nice keyboard, good travel, probably a little lower travel compared to my M1 Max MacBook, but great keyboard nonetheless. And you get a set of function keys, of course, and a fingerprint reader, which was surprisingly reliable. I did not expect it to work so well. Unfortunately, it wasn't all rainbows and sunshine for me with this laptop, for somebody who wants productivity on the go. But for some things, you should probably look somewhere else. For example, it has an Arduino GPU, so light gaming is fine, but I can't do any heavy gaming. Not that I'm a gamer, but I really wanted to use my MetaQuest 3S with this, but unfortunately, the Quest Link does not support the Arduino GPU, so I'm left 
not being able to do PC VR. Another downside is you get a max of 16 gigs of RAM, which is fine for most use cases, but in case you really want more, you can't get that. Also, you get a EUFS soldered on storage. You don't get SSD, so that might have some performance implications. It did slow down sometimes, I noticed when I was using a lot of heavy browsing and stuff like that, but it should be fine for the most part. The Snapdragon processor does pretty well. Of course, I mentioned the micro SD card, not a full size SD card, and one of the downsides for some people may be that it is Windows. For me, that is an upside. In the sense, my nine to five job is completely into the Microsoft ecosystem, so it has better compatibility with peripherals and things like that, but it does not, of course, support software that I need for this YouTube channel, which is Final Cut Pro, a Motion, and things like that. Now, a lot of my use case is video calling and audio, and I must say that both the cameras are potatoes, but the Mac is arguably a better potato. You can see the footage here side by side. Which one is worse? Well, I'll leave that up to you. And Mac touts studio quality microphones. Are they really? Let's do a side-by-side -side test. This is the Samsung webcam. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. MacBook, webcam, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. So that is one reason I cannot move to this laptop full time. I'd love to switch to this. It's a beautiful laptop, but the lack of that software, yes, the ecosystem lock-in is real, as I said in the beginning, prevents me from moving to it. But this is a fantastic laptop if you want Windows, and if you have a Samsung device, definitely check it out, end of life.